In the internet age, everything moves at like 10 billion miles an hour. I don't know if you've ever tried to keep up with a single medium and try to stay on top of everything going on in the popular sphere for something, but like, let's say you want to keep up with music, so many songs get released every day, so many albums get released every week, it's impossible. Most systems that exist to show you new releases, like let's just say you check the Spotify new releases page, it is still a heavily curated list of everything that gets released. So not only is your mouth to a fire hose, your mouth is connected connected to a fire hose, which is connected to somebody else's exploded body from their mouth being on the fire hose multiple times over. Maybe that's a little bit of a graphic depiction, but what I'm trying to say is it's impossible to keep up with everything. And one of the coolest things about the book sphere is that maybe it's just because book people are used to taking their time with things, or maybe it's just because books take a really long time to enjoy. The book sphere in general seems to move slightly slower than lots of these other things. If somebody picks up a popular fantasy book, it can be really old and people can still really want to engage with that content or talk about that book. Some of the most popular videos I have on my channel are like reading the Cosmere books super late or reading the King Killer Chronicles books super late or heck, reading Twilight like way freaking late. But I think that's awesome because I think that it's okay to enjoy things longer than two seconds or two days or whatever. Something that I think is pretty cool to do is to check out Goodreads from time to time. And there's lots of people that have legitimate problems with Goodreads. In general, I think that Goodreads is kind of cool still. And one of the cool features that Goodreads has is there's a section called Most Read This Week. You can sort it out by genre, and of course, I'm primarily a fantasy reader, but if you check out the Most Read This Week section on Goodreads, you are often going to see older books and newer books both incorporated into what is popular right now, and I think that's a pretty cool feature, and I like that you can see just what's popular, and it includes older stuff as well. And the purpose of today's video is going to be looking at the Goodreads Most Read This Week section and just judging books by their cover, because that's what we all kind of do when we're trying to pick something up. So by default, if you pick a genre, Goodreads shows you the 15 most popular books read this week in said genre. We're gonna be talking about fantasy. Let's go. So I don't know if these are actually in order of most popular books read this week to least popular books read this week, but I'm going to make the assumption that it is just for the purpose of this video. The number one book most read this week is The Queen of Nothing by Holly Black. This is the third book in the Folk of the Air trilogy. This is a series that I tried getting into, but it didn't necessarily click with me. That's fine. It's a hugely popular series that's been popular probably since its release. It's definitely been popular since I've been on booktube, but even putting aside the fact that I DNF'd the first book in the series when I tried to read it, I'm not a huge fan of this cover personally. I don't know if it's a combination of just the way that the art is placed with the broken crown and the snake and then the presumably maybe blood stain or broken flower or whatever. This is not a cover that typically appeals to me, but I think it is a really evocative cover if you're into YA romance, those kind of things. I think there's a huge reason, not just hype, that this book gets picked up and I think this is the type of cover that can appeal to a lot of people even if it's not necessarily me. I want to like this cover more, but also I'm obviously not the target audience, so so what are you gonna do? The next book on this list is This Time Tomorrow by Emma Straub. This is a book that I have not heard of at all, just based on the circles that I typically run in in the book community. It looks like it was released just one month ago. And honestly, the cover doesn't really strike me as being fantasy at all. And reading the description, I didn't even pick up on how it was fantasy at first. But based on the blurb that I read on Goodreads, it looks like this is a story where a 40 year old person wakes up one day and they've traveled back in time to be able to spend time with their father and the protagonist gets the opportunity to relive experiences in her life. And I think that's actually a really cool premise. Honestly, this is another opportunity for me to talk about the fact that I love how diverse and broad the subject matter of the fantasy genre is because it really can include anything that just includes elements that are not normal. And if you focus more on it being a magic instead of science fiction based with the time travel element we see here, then obviously that would classify it as fantasy. I'm not going to judge it for not being fantasy. It seems like maybe a historical historical fantasy with elements of romance. I don't know specifically, but this could even be something that you could consider literary fiction. That being said, even though the book premise sounds interesting to me, I don't know if this cover would have ever gripped me in any way. It's just not the type of thing that grabs my attention. But once again, if this is actually historical fantasy, I'm probably not the target audience. But hey, if you've read this book or if you've heard people talk about it before, let me know more in the comments down below because it does sound really interesting. And I do find myself from time to time enjoying books that are outside of my normal wheelhouse. Have any of you read this? 
this time tomorrow by Emma Straub. Next up, we have A Queen of Ruin by K.F. Breen. Looking this up on Goodreads, it looks like it is the fourth book in the Deliciously Dark Fairy Tales series. This is another one that I've never heard of personally. Based on the series title, I don't know if it's like fairy tale retellings or just more of a fairy tale style vibe. If I were to guess, it's marketed as a YA book, though I have no idea it could easily be an adult book. But what I will say is I actually think this cover is really cool. For one, some of my favorite color combinations are black and red. The spiky fence here with smoke and fire and the way the roses are put on the fence. I actually think this one's really awesome. And honestly, I think it's so cool that I'm going to have to look into the series after the video because I really do like this cover. This was another book released just this year and it seems to be one of the most popular books being read this week. If you happen to be on my channel and you know what this book is, do you think I should read this series? I'm not afraid to put anything on my TBR. But yeah, Queen of Ruin cover, I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10 probably. Next up is the Primal Hunter book two by Zogarth, I think is how you pronounce that. This literally says lit RPG on the cover, which I've never read any lit RPG genre books. But if I understand correctly, it semi can kind of cross over with progression fantasy, which I've recently discovered I might be really interested in. But more importantly, judging this book by its cover, this one is easily an eight, if not nine out of 10 for me. I love the wooded atmosphere of this cover and the fact that there is a like tree ant monster sort of attacking this ranger who's highlighted in blue magic. This implies magic. This implies evil forest monsters. The fact that it's called the primal hunter. I love the word primal. I think I said ranger when I was describing the D and D type class of the protagonist on the front of this book. At least I think it's the protagonist, but it literally says hunter in the title. So I probably should have gone with hunter if I was just picking generic fantasy classes to assign this person. But this one is definitely awesome. Just peeking at the covers of the other books in the series. I also approve of those. This one, well, more specifically, the first book in the series added to my TBR just now. Next up, Cersei by Madeline Miller. Now, this is a book I have heard a decent number of people talk about on booktube. The people that I know, I don't think they necessarily loved it, but they thought it was okay. I think it's some sort of feminist retelling of Greek history based on what I know and the cover, namely the title. Now, this cover doesn't necessarily appeal to me, but I think it's because it seems more like something that would be considered like higher art than the fantasy that I typically enjoy, which is sort of painting myself in a little bit of a dumb bubble, but it's the truth of the matter. This almost feels like something that would leak into the like literary fiction style of things. I don't know if that's true or not, but because of that, I find myself averse to the title, even though I can't point out anything specifically that I dislike about it. I like the orange on black aesthetic. I think maybe it's mostly the fact that this seems like it's historical fiction. And obviously I don't think it is historical fiction. I do think it's fantasy historical fantasy of some sort, but I don't typically like that genre that much as a broad rule. I've enjoyed things that are historical fantasy as well. But like I said, it gives me historical fiction vibes, which is not usually my thing. Though technically Daisy Jones and the Six, I guess is historical fiction. And I love Daisy Jones and the Six. So next up is The Room in the Attic by Luis Douglas. Now, first off, cover vibes right away. This one does not look interesting to me at all. If I saw this book at any bookstore, I would never even read the back. I would never assume this was fantasy. And based on the fact that covers are meant to market to the audiences that will probably want to read those books, I'm thinking this one's not for me. Actually reading the blurb while doing this video just now, this looks like another book that has historical fantasy, mainly like maybe time travel elements or like visions of the past that happens in an area. And if you just told me a book was called The Room in the Attic, I'm going to assume it's either a classic, a thriller, or something that purports to be a thriller, but it's actually some sort of literary fiction. I don't know. I don't get any good vibes from this cover. It's a girl running into what I think is supposed to be a mental asylum through gates. I'm not feeling this one. Has anybody watching this video like this book? Please let me know. If you want to pitch me differently on it, go ahead and do so. But of all the books that we looked at so far, I think this is probably my least favorite. Speaking of covers that really don't vibe with me at all, the next book in this list is is Dean Koontz's Quicksilver book. And if I'm being honest, I would have just assumed if this didn't have Dean Koontz on the front, that this might be a Tom Clancy book from the 80s. I've only read one Tom Clancy book. I did enjoy it, but it's definitely not a genre that I'm typically going to go to, mostly because I don't like books that don't have magical elements usually, because I'm shallow. Then I noticed that the title is Quicksilver and it makes me start thinking of Western themes, obviously. And reading the blurb, this looks like it is a combination of suspense, thriller, uh, maybe maybe a little bit of Western vibes because it takes place in a desert. But honestly, based on the blurb, it does kind of sound interesting. Some kind of potentially paranormal or science fiction power draws a character to a certain area. Maybe he has special powers. Someone has the ability to tell the future. Someone has the ability to control magnetism. I've never read Dean Koontz. 
This does sound semi-interesting, but like I said, I never would have picked it up based on the cover. This one's also pretty low down there. Next up, Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco. Thank goodness we are back to fantasy presenting fantasy books. With the skull on the front, the golden snake, the golden flowers, I like the color tone, I like the fact that it seems more like a fantasy. Looking at the blurb, this seems super romance focused potentially, which is not necessarily my jam, but I do like this cover a lot more. Now, I noticed at the top of this one it says James Patterson Presents. I don't know how how that works like is James Patterson help a bunch of other authors is James Patterson just a pen name for a bunch of different authors I honestly don't know because I freaking just read fantasy too much I guess knowing that James Patterson is one of the best-selling authors I think of all time maybe one of the most prolific writers of our time looks like it's the first book in a series this one looks like it was released in October of 2020 around Halloween time this is another book I've never heard of have any of you read it if I was gonna rate this cover I'd give it probably a light five to six all right, next cover, Found by the Lake Monster by Lillian Lark. Let me just tell you, this cover kind of is cool. I like the blue on pink. I like the Phantom of the Opera vibes the monster that's holding this lady gives. I actually really liked his cover. It looks mysterious. It looks creepy. It looks fairy tale esque This is the type of book that I would see at a store and I would pick it up and be like, you know what? I'm going to read the blurb on the back of this book. Unfortunately, the blurb on the back of this book does not appeal to me at all. When I clicked the blurb, I was immediately drawn to the part of text that were completely bold. My eye was not drawn to the first bold text, but the last bold text, which simply reads, can he convince his date to not only provide relief during his heat, but also carry his eggs? No, I don't really care about that. But the cover, the cover though, seven out of 10. Next up, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. Now is a chance for me to get a little bit real here. This is like the prequel book for the Hunger Games trilogy, which I know going in, I've seen a lot of people talk about this book, but this is probably an opportunity for me to say that not only do I not really care for the Hunger Games as a book series, which is neither here nor there at this point, I think all of the covers for these books are completely uninteresting. I don't care for them. I don't like the cover for this book. I don't like the cover for any of the other books. I don't know why they just seem so lame to me, but I do think it's a little bit maybe just forward with having it called the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes and just having a songbird and a snake on the front. I mean, I guess all of the books have had birds on the covers of them, I, I don't know, but there was no world where I would see this cover and think I would like this book, which I guess I'm correct because I did didn't like the Hunger Games books, didn't like those covers either. Probably gonna give this one a three or four out of 10. The next book cover, I cannot give you the title of because I don't know the title of it. It seems to be entirely in Japanese. It's by Mia Kazuki. My assumption is that this is the cover of a manga or a graphic novel. I actually think this cover is pretty cool. It's very obviously fantasy. It seems very Japanese. I've always been interested in reading more manga. The characters on the cover give me a lot of JRPG vibes or maybe Fire Emblem vibes, which is I guess technically a JRPG. But most of my engagement with Japanese Japanese culture has been from the video game side and less from the book side. Though I am a big fan of Full Metal Alchemist, the first series, I've never watched Brotherhood, and I absolutely freaking love the television show for Death Note. I need to read the Death Note manga at some point and talk about it on this channel because I really, really do love that original series. I never saw the Netflix adaptation, it's okay. Gonna give this cover a six out of 10, and I don't know what the title of the book is, but if you look at the series, you can see that it is the Ascendance of a Bookworm Light Novel number 4.7, which I gotta love the 4.7 numbering on that book uh yeah the next book is i think our only repeat author this is carrie maniscalco's kingdom of the curse this is book two of the kingdom of the wicked series where we just talked about book one i think i like this one even more it's got like icy vibes still got the skull we got a crown this time and this time we also have the subtraction of the james patterson presents thing so maybe the series is doing well on its own in fact it probably is doing well on its own because it's on this list of most popular books being read this week but yeah i like this cover we have the crown to imply the kingdom. We have a gate that implies maybe there's some sort of prison type thing taking place. Kingdom of the Cursed is a pretty good title, but with the series being called Kingdom of the Wicked and then this one being called Kingdom of the Cursed and the first book also being called Kingdom of the Wicked, that's a little bit confusing. Seven out of 10. Keeping along with that cursed theme in the title. Trouble with the Curse by Kim Harrison is a killer title. Once again, love the orange. This one includes yellow. This one has some sort of paranormal fantasy version of Kim Possible on the cover, which I'm always a fan of. Subtitle on this one is In the Hollows, Be Careful What You Wish For. But Trouble with the Cursed, I 
think is a, a pretty cool title. It's probably either a zombie story or maybe a vampire story. But going back to the Kim Possible angle, maybe we could see a live action adaptation of this. Maybe Christy Carlson and Romano could be Kim Possible in Fantasy World Kicking Vampire Butt or something. I don't know. But I like this one. I'd like to get more into paranormal fantasy myself. This one seems very obviously fantasy with the way that the character is holding their hands, implying that they might be using a spell of some sort. And I really do think that it is an art to try to paint characters using magic with their hands because it can it can be a delicate balance between having it look too stressed or too pained or not cool enough or whatever. I think this one pulls it off totally. This one was released June 14th, which I think makes it the most recent release that we've talked about here. So this one is actually a pretty new book. I was considering adding it to my TBR, but I just saw that it says The Hollows book number 16. And I don't know if I have it in me to start another series that has 16 books in it right now. Maybe they're short, I don't know. But hey, I would at least check out the blurb on this one based on the cover. Solid seven out of 10. I say. Next up is The Island of Missing Trees by Elif Shafak. And I will say this is not the type of a uh, cover that would typically draw me in. It reminds me of the like really fancy redone covers for classics. Uh, it's just an artistic aesthetic that doesn't necessarily appeal to me. Without looking up another picture, it kind of reminds me of the Little Women reimagined cover, which I think is really pretty for what that story is, but it's also not typically what I'm looking for in a fantasy. This one was released in August of 2021, so it's not a a super recent release which means the fact that it is still being read by a lot of people means it's probably pretty interesting and good to whatever community is reading it once again this is one i've never heard of once again i'm getting kind of literary fantasy vibes from it which is not something that i always love personally and the tone that i'm getting from it is not one that i typically vibe with four out of ten last on the list is kingdom of ash by sarah j mass i think this cover is really cool i think all of the third glass covers are pretty cool honestly putting a character on the front of your book can be really hit or miss but the way that it's sort of cartoonish on these covers i think really works i think it's cool sarah j mass is one of the most popular fantasy authors that i know of today it's extremely rare to not see a sarah j mass book on the most popular books being read right now thing because she's an extremely popular author i'm sure that she has a huge community i did try to read a court of thorns and roses and just completely hard, hard, hard DNF that one about 50% of the way through. It's not for me. I don't think Sarah J. Mass is the author for me. But with both the Court of Thorns and Roses and Throne of Glass series, I do think the covers are still pretty sweet. Probably give this one an 8 out of 10 overall. But yeah, once again, to reiterate the fact that people love to read Sarah J. Mass books, this was a 2018 release. So kind of old in the year-wise thing we're talking about. And that wraps up the list of the top 15 books being read right now according to Goodreads. What did you guys think about the covers for these books? If you've read any of these books what do you think that i would think about them do you think my assessments were correct did you have strongly differing opinions on which covers you thought were awesome and which ones you didn't like as much please let me know in the comments down below if you like this video and you want to see me do more like it both in fantasy but maybe with science fiction as well you occasionally want me to pop in and just give my thoughts on covers or you want to discuss covers together just let me know you can do it in the comments you can hit the like button which lets me know that you like the video and honestly if you'd like to see more videos like this or reviews or whatever in the future please consider subscribing to the channel i'd be very grateful if you did if you hit the notification bell you'll get notified whenever i post new videos in the future what book release are you most anticipating being released for the rest of this year i hope to see you again soon until next time goodbye